Hello and welcome to this video brought to you by www.learningarabicwithangela.com 100% free Arabic learning resources for everyone. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Find me on Facebook, just search for Learning Arabic with Angela to get daily Arabic learning tips and resources in your Facebook feed. In this lesson in Modern Standard Arabic, we will learn about feminine and masculine and we will also practice at the end. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to tell apart feminine and masculine nouns in Arabic. You'll also be able to use the correct nouns accordingly. And you'll be able to tell apart he does versus she does in a simple method. A noun in Arabic is called ism. And like many other languages, we have what is masculine, mudakkar, and what is feminine, mu'annath. And if I say a word like cow, baqara, we know that I'm speaking about a feminine noun because it is the female animal. But when I say thawr, a bull, we know that this is a masculine noun because I'm speaking about the male animal. Or when I say rajul, a man, this is obviously a masculine noun. But when I say imra'a, a woman, this is obviously a female or feminine noun. However, there are words that are non-human or non-animal and it gets difficult to tell if they're feminine or not. And it's mainly because we humans designated this classification, whether this noun is feminine or masculine. And you will find in different languages, the same word could be feminine in one language, but it could be masculine in another language. In Arabic, there are certain signs that can tell you if a noun is feminine. The most common sign is the ta marbuta at the end such as hadiqa or sayyara, a garden and a car. So both words end with the ta marbuta. And the second sign is the alif mamduda at the end of the word, which is the long uh, vowel followed by the glottal stop, the hamza. Such as when I say sama, sahra, so in these two words, a sky and a desert, we see at the end the elongated or the stretched alif and the hamza. And another sign is the alif maqsura at the end of the word, such as af'a and sughra. So it's a shorter sound of the alif, af'a, sughra. And these words mean snake and sughra means smaller or smallest. It's an adjective. And some words don't have any obvious signs, but they're feminine just because they are feminine in Arabic. Like ain, which means an eye, and shams, which means sun. So to recap once again, there are three main signs that tell you if a noun is feminine in Arabic. The most common sign is the atta al marbuta at the end of the word or al alif al mamduda which is the long alif vowel followed by the hamza the glottal stop and al alif al maqsura the shorter alif sound and remember that there are some words that do not have any sign at all and they're feminine just because they are feminine and you will learn them just by exposure.
Another interesting fact about some nouns in Arabic that they could be both feminine and masculine. So there's no right or wrong with these nouns, such as the word sikin, a knife. So I can say هذه سكين or هذا سكين and both mean this is a knife. Or the word سوق which means market. Or the word سلم which means a ladder. So there's no right or wrong with these words. They could be either feminine or masculine. Let's look at our first example. هو طبيب هي طبيبة طبيب means doctor in Arabic. So when I say هو طبيب that means he is a doctor. هو is the pronoun for he and this is a nominal sentence. And notice that we do not have verb to be in Arabic, so we straight away say he, doctor, because the pronoun in itself kind of contains verb to be. So, huwa tabib means he is a doctor. To change it to feminine, we add atta al marbuta at the end of the noun. So, hiya, which means she. It becomes hiya tabiba. She is a doctor. And notice that we do not pronounce the ta before the full stop. So tabibatun becomes hiya tabiba. That's it. It's kind of silence because we have a full stop. Huwa tabib. He is a doctor. Hiya tabiba. Notice the difference in the sounds. Tabib, tabiba. Tabib, tabiba. So notice the ah sound at the end. More examples. So we said tabib becomes tabiba in the feminine. Huwa tabib, hiya tabiba. What about muhandis, an engineer? Muhandis becomes Muhandisa. Muhandisa. A female engineer. A teacher. Ustad. Ustad. In the feminine becomes Ustada. Ustada. A female teacher. And a male police officer. Shurti. Shurti becomes Shurtiya, Shurtiya, a female police officer. Muwaddaf, an employee or a male employee, becomes Muwaddafa, Muwaddafa. Muzara, a farmer, Muzara becomes Muzari'a. Muzari'a. Now let's try to add an adjective. And an adjective in Arabic has to follow the noun in terms of three things. Definiteness or indefiniteness. So if the noun has al tarif or al, the adjective has to have al as well. And if the noun doesn't have al, the adjective also must not have L. The second thing is in terms of number. So if the noun is singular, the adjective has to be singular. If the noun is dual, the adjective has to be dual. If the noun is plural, the adjective has to be plural. And last but not least, if the noun is masculine, the adjective has to be masculine. And if the noun is feminine, the adjective has to be feminine. So, huwa tabibun mahir. He is a skilled doctor. Tabib means doctor and mahir means skilled. In the feminine, we have to use hiya for she. 
هي طبيبة ماهرة She is a skilled doctor So طبيب becomes طبيبة And ماهر becomes ماهرة One important note is that whenever we have a punctuation mark, like a comma or a full stop at the end of the sentence, we do not pronounce the tashkil or the haraka. So, huwa tabibun mahirun, we say huwa tabibun mahir instead. So, instead of mahirun, mahir. We imagine that there's a sukun at the last letter of the last word. Hiya tabibatun mahiratun. We pronounce it here, tabibatun mahira, instead. So, instead of mahiratun, mahira. In addition to not pronouncing the diacritic at the end of a sentence or before a stop sign, when we have a ta al marbuta at the end of a word and there is a stop, like a full stop at the end of the sentence, we actually pronounce it as if it's a silent ها and it sounds like a so tabibatun mahira so the sound is a we have to imagine that there's a silent ها instead of ta so hiya tabibatun mahira now let's take the same example and add demonstrative pronouns instead of personal pronouns. So instead of he and she, we're going to put this. So this is a skilled doctor. In the masculine, we're going to say هذا 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 طبيب ماهر And in the feminine, هذه 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 طبيبة ماهرة Now we're going to use a verb in the present tense. So we want to say he likes his job and she likes her job. So we have to use the verb ahabba, which means to like or to love in Arabic. Huwa yuhibbu, he likes. We use the ya with the dhamma, yuhibbu. Hiya tuhibbu, she likes. We use the ta with a dhamma. So, yuhibbu versus tuhibbu in the feminine. Huwa yuhibbu, hiya tuhibbu. Huwa yuhibbu amalahu, his job. So, over here we've got an attached personal pronoun, which means his job. So, the hu means his. Versus, hiya tuhibbu amalaha. هي تحب عملها. So the ha, which is the ha with the alif, means ha. Her job. عملها. هو يحب عمله. هي تحب عملها. Notice that in English we say his job. But in Arabic it's reversed. So we start with job first, which is عمل. And then we add the pronoun attached to it. So it's one word. Amalahu versus Amalaha in the feminine. And notice that we're speaking about the third person here at this stage. Huwa yuhibbu Amalahu hiya tuhibbu Amalaha. And now we're going to speak about things. Hada kitabun Qadim. This is an old book. Notice in Arabic that the noun comes before the adjective. So, kitab, which is book, comes before the adjective qadim, which is old. We used hada because it's the demonstrative for the singular masculine noun in Arabic. This is versus the second example, which is هذه طاولة قديمة. This is an old table. Tawila is a feminine noun because it ends with the atta al marbuta. Similarly, the adjective following it has to comply 
with being feminine so we add also a ta marbuta at the end so هذه طاولة قديمة instead of قديم هذه طاولة قديمة And now let's just do some practice to refresh our memory because it's a lot of information to take in. Saeed Saeed is an adjective meaning happy. Saeed What do you think the feminine adjective would be? Saida would be the feminine adjective. Saida. So we added a ta al marbuta at the end. Saida. Hazin. Hazin. That means sad. Hazin. Hazina. Hazina. That means sad. Hazina. Let's compare them all. Saeed. Saida. That means happy in the masculine and the feminine. Versus Hazin and Hazina. Which means sad. In this exercise, you're required to listen carefully to the word I'm going to say and choose which option it is. The first one, second one or third. Let's start. Hazina. 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 And the correct option is the second one. Hazina. Saeed. 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 And the correct option is the first one. And the last word in this exercise. Saeeda. 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 The right option would be Good job, that would be the first one. Now you're able to differentiate the masculine from the feminine sounds. For this exercise, you have to complete the sentence. أكمل الجملة So we've got هو and here and you have to choose the appropriate adjective from the column on the left-hand side. So let's begin. هو What would you choose for هو؟ هو سعيد هو سعيدة أو هو حزين أو هو حزينة And the correct answer would be هو حزين هو حزين What about هي؟ هي هي سعيدة هي سعيدة We're going to do the same here هو and هي هو هو سعيد and هي 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 حزينة هو سعيد هي حزينة أحسنتم Good job And now we're going to practice with he does versus she does Remember we said هو يحب عمله وهي تحب عملها ماذا يفعل أحمد؟ What's أحمد doing؟ ماذا يفعل أحمد؟ أحمد 
يشتري الطعام أحمد يشتري الطعام أحمد is buying food ماذا تفعل فاطمة؟ What's Fatima doing? ماذا تفعل فاطمة؟ فاطمة تشتري الطعام فاطمة تشتري الطعام فاطمة is buying food Let's recap هو يشتري versus هي تشتري هو يشتري هي تشتري And now the second example ماذا يفعل What's he doing ماذا يفعل هو يبيع العصير هو يبيع العصير He is selling juice ماذا تفعل What's she doing ماذا تفعل هي تبيع العصير هي تبيع العصير She is selling juice Let's compare the verbs together He does versus she does هو يشتري هي تشتري هو يبيع هي تبيع And now for this exercise, you're required to listen carefully to the sentence I'm about to say and choose the picture that best describes the sentence. Are you ready? Let's go! هو يبيع العصير هو يبيع العصير هو يبيع العصير Which option are you going to choose? أحسنتم هو يبيع العصير Second picture هي تشتري الطعام هي تشتري الطعام Which picture are you going to choose? أحسنتم هي تشتري الطعام هي تبيع العصير هي تبيع العصير Which picture is this sentence about? أحسنتم هي تبيع العصير And now we're going to match and complete the sentence So we have هو in the first picture and here for the second picture and you have to choose the correct verb from the column on the left. So what's he doing? هو هو يشتري أحسنتم And now هي ماذا تفعل؟ هي هي تبيع أحسنتم And now we have two different pictures and هو هي هو هو يبيع هي هي تشتري أحسنتم أحسنتم Good job Good job following with the lesson so far. So let's recap very quickly. There are several signs to tell if a noun is feminine and the most famous one is at al marbuta And we've done some exercises for that and there are other signs like the alif and the hamza like in sahra or sama 
and we have al alif al maqsura like in the words af'a or sughra and we know that for some words there are no signs at all like ain or shams and we also know that for some words as well they can be both feminine and masculine and we also um, learned about the pronouns huwa and hiya so huwa yaf'al wa hiya taf'al so huwa yaf'al wa hiya taf'al and we done some exercises with the verbs and we also said that for any adjective in Arabic it has to follow the noun in terms of definiteness and indefiniteness and in terms of gender and in terms of being singular or plural. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to get notified of any new videos. Again, find me on Facebook. If you haven't already, just search for Learning Arabic with Angela. Visit the blog www.learningarabicwithangela.com to get free unlimited downloads and resources in Arabic learning. Thank you and until we meet again in the next video.